If you have a brown piece of paper at home, please use that for this lesson. If you don't, any type of paper will do, a notebook paper, you know, computer paper. We want it to go vertical the tall way. This is horizontal. We need it vertical, straight up and down, because we're going to take these corners here, and we're going to fold under these corners here. Let the two corners meet. We are creating our totem pole. I'm going to crease it because I will need that crease later. Now I'm going to take these two corners and I'm going to let them meet the top two corners. So I'm folding it one more time. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, just do your best. And again, I'm going to crease that because I need that crease in a minute. When I open that back up, I have a piece of paper with four sections and I can build my totem pole right in the middle. When we're all done, you can even take your paper and you'll be able to roll it around like an old paper towel. If you have an old paper towel um, container, you can do that. Or you can even just tape the back, put a little tape on the back, and it'll stand up and you have your own totem pole. All right, so we're going to work down here. I'm going to use a marker for this. I highly suggest that you work with pencil. And then when you're done, trace over with a marker if you've got a marker. I'm working down here only today, and I'm working in the middle part. I'm going to put my totem pole. Remember, it's going to go up like this, and then when I fold my paper around, we'll be able to see just the middle. I do have some cheat sheets here um, of totem animals that are kind of already abstracted. Remember, abstract means they don't look real. You can still tell what they are, but they don't look real for this particular one. Um, you got a penguin and a baby and a turtle and a, I think that could be a hippo or a pig, a bird. That could be a dolphin, whale, or shark. Elephant, monkey, a bull, or a cow. Ferret or a raccoon. This could be a cat, a tiger, or a cheetah, or even a panther, depending on how you decorate inside of it. A snake or a lizard, a bear. This could be a goat, or this side looks more like a horse, so depending if you want to do a horse, you might do it that, that side. Or a goat, you would give it a different type of eye. A beaver or chipmunk fox or dog or a bird. So um, for me, I think I'm going to do a bird. I'm going to do that wise old owl that I was talking about before. And I'm going to do my bird right here in the middle of my paper. Again, I'd like you to draw with pencil. That way, if you make a mistake, you can erase it. I am drawing with markers so you can see it better. It's kind of hard to see pencil on dark paper. So there's my little curve. And I'm going to change this a little bit because I'm doing an owl. I want to do really nice big circular eyes like owls have, nice big circular eyes, okay? So there's my owl's eyes, and then I'm gonna do a little tiny beak. They don't have a very large beak. Okay, there we go, right there. And then I wanna do down here some little feet. And then I'm gonna come in on the sides with some feathers and I'm gonna make them kind of geometric abstract. All right, you can add as much detail as you want to the owl. I'm gonna do a two, two little tufts of, um, two little feathers coming up like that for the owl. And then that means when I do my other animal next week, I need to figure out what part of the animal that could be as well. Um, you can add any other designs that you want at this point. right and then you can start adding color and you're just going to have to experiment to see what works the best with color um, on darker paper if you're working on white paper you could really sky's the limit you could do whatever you wanted but um, with a brown paper it can be a challenge and honestly I don't color the whole thing in anyway I like to leave a little bit of that brown paper showing because it always reminds me of the um, cedar wood that the totem pole artists would use when they were making their totem pole. And I think that looks kind of neat. So I'm gonna do limited color for mine. But again, we are um, we are our own artists. And if you want to play around with color and add things that maybe wouldn't be in a traditional totem pole, you know, that's okay because it's okay to learn something new and make it your own. As long as you understand the history and um, the culture behind it, that's okay. So I'm just adding a few colors for myself that I, I enjoy. And you can see um, my crayons are looking actually pretty good on this. They look pretty nice and bright. And I'm taking my time and I am not coloring uh, fast because I want to give it 
the attention it deserves. Okay, so this week we are only doing our bottom animal on our totem pole, and that animal, since this is a personal totem pole, that animal needs to represent us. And uh, next week we'll talk about maybe some animals that will represent family and loved ones, okay? So I think I'm gonna call this one almost done. Let me finish this fun little design I put up here. And I'm pleasantly surprised that my, oops, I meant to grab a blue. I'm pleasantly surprised that my crayons are showing up as well as they are. So crayons might be the way to go for this particular lesson. All right, there we go. And so now it is your turn.